Hi, my name is Dean Devlin. I'm really excited about a new TV series I'm doing for TNT called Leverage. So come with me and let me give you a look behind the scenes. of thieves who have worked their whole lives alone. They've never worked in a group and they've been antisocial to begin with. Nate, in essence, is the glue that holds them together. The character I play, Nate, he's not a thief, but he's, he's, a, he's quite a good profiler of thieves. I and mean, that's what he did uh, for, for years when he worked for uh, an insurance company. Hey, hey you, hey, where's the Pacifica, uh, the cruise, the parking for the cruise? every possible scam that people would try to do to collect money off of insurance claims. Leverage was kind of a weird intersection of influences. Uh, Chris Downey and I had been talking about the fact that no one was really doing heist or con shows the way we thought they were attractive. You know, we were talking about how there was just no kind of fun con show on TV like there was back in the 70s, and we wanted to do more of a return to that. You watch these shows for the candy. You watch it, so at the end of it, you go, oh, that's the magic trick. When John was presented with this opportunity from Dean Devlin, we just jumped at it. We said, this is something we've been wanting to do for a long time. So it all kind of like came together. Well, I have a phenomenal team on this show. Uh, John Rogers is my favorite writer on the planet. And the fact that he's running this show and running that writer's room, it's a gift. The pitch was basically, um, it was like the A-Team. People are saying Ocean's 11, Ocean's 12, stuff like that. I really think it's a modern day A-Team, to be honest with you. It was essentially reformed uh, cons and thieves who, because of the leadership of one man, decide to use their skills for good. And the interesting thing about it is they're not all really reformed. And so in the, in the pilot, you see them come together on one single job, just one job and it's a walk away. It all goes wrong. It wouldn't be fun if, uh, you know, they set out this great plan in the beginning and then everything goes perfectly. Uh, Tim Hutton, Nate, is the one who bands them back together for vengeance, and when they work together, they realize this is the most fun they've ever had. And since they're all really adrenaline junkies anyway, they decide to work together, but they have to follow Nate's one rule, which is this time we go after the bad guys. You know, we start with great scripts every single week, and that, that's really a blessing. Usually on a show, you get a couple good scripts, and the rest you gotta beat up and beat up until you get something worth shooting. Every week we're handed another gem, so we, we start with something great. The great thing about it is that there haven't been these kind of bad guys on TV. So it's kind of like a, a, there's a lot of stuff out there that hasn't been mined. These kind of CEOs and, and, his, and corrupt corporate types. And uh, you know, every day we'll, we'll email something to each other. And so, you know, we're always kind of looking for uh, these things and try and put our own sort of spin on it. Nearly all the cons that are presented in the show are based on actual cons. And we have these marvelous people who are working with us, led by Apollo Robbins, who are, who's, who's opened up this encyclopedia of cons and heists. Growing up, my two half-brothers were involved in crimes. They were thieves. And my dad was a minister, so I grew up in that dichotomy. And it made me an honest thief. We knew that on, a, a, say, a cop show, they typically have an ex-cop as a technical consultant on a medical show. They'll have, an, have a doctor. So I suggested, why don't we get this guy, Paula Robbins, a, as our pickpocket consultant. I work as a professional thief. I do it honestly for uh, the good of people. In hacking, they call it black hats and white hats. I wear a white hat, but I keep my foot in the black as well, so I get the latest information of current trends going on with cons and fraud. A lot of this is with identity theft nowadays, but my fascination is with the classic long cons, which is what we're doing on this show. Apollo Robbins is a walking encyclopedia of crime, <laughs> and he knows the long history of what cons were used where, what techniques are used, to distract you. I've worked with Apollo Robbins uh, on the set, uh, uh, learning some techniques for sleight of hand and pickpocket and uh, you know uh, ways to divert people's attention to accomplish other things. And yeah, it's it's, it's been great working with him. We, we've all worked with him. Apollo, meeting him was a lot of fun. He actually showed us a few things here and there. Uh, came in on, you know, an episode where we were playing cards. Showed us some, some card tricks. Apollo Robbins, um, 
I don't know what you're talking about. I like to call him the people whisperer. <laughs> the man of mystery. <laughs> because he's so studied human behavior. He's amazing. He's he's the real deal. He's He knows that world, you know, inside, forwards, backwards. He's a master at misdirection. Apollo is legit, so you don't have to be afraid. He's good people. <laughs> the other day he was in a room and he had, he wrote something on a card and he walked up to this man and he took his glasses down like this and he walked closer and closer and closer. And the man went like this. And Apollo said, turn the card over. And the card said, I'm gonna make you cross your arms. And it's that kind of understanding psychology and human behavior allows him to make you look here when he's doing something over here. And that's something he's brought to the set and all the actors have learned how to do it. A sleight of hand artist is, uh, they used to call it press the digitation, uh, the art of uh, specific manipulation with the hands. My fascination is not with the magic you would see on TV, with the illusionist per se, but the classic sleight of hand used by thieves that was passed from generation to generation. Who could really pull off a scam out of all of us? Me. Pretty much me, yeah. I work with uh, primarily three people. Uh, Parker is my first, because uh, I develop a lot of the scenes and she does them herself. For uh, Timothy, or Nate's character, I'll come in and do the hands sometimes to add certain flourish to his style. And then also working with Sophie as a character and helping her add a little bit of con element to what she does. And all of them have picked it up very well. One of the things that was very surprising is that when Apollo Robbins uh, started training Beth Reesgraf to play Parker, was that she had a natural ability for it. It, uh, it, in fact, if the show doesn't go well, she may have a new career because she can pick your pocket and you don't even know it. <laughs> I steal everything all the time. Check your back pocket. Oh, she's a very good girl. She doesn't steal, she doesn't steal from anyone yet. <laughs> Let's see how the ratings go. <laughs> There's an old saying that it takes a thief to catch a thief. So I've been spending time going into prisons and recruiting ex-thieves who are nonviolent, but they're grifters, but they have an insight into the psychology and the techniques that are used. Because uh, I have limited knowledge in certain areas, but with their backgrounds, I get to learn a little bit from a wide range. So I'm kind of a jack of all trades with a, a diversion fraud and theft. When we were casting the show, we really wanted to make sure that we had characters that were from very disparate backgrounds, including from around the world, and that these were people who were world travelers. Tim Hutton plays Nathan Ford, who is a man who had lived his entire life by the straight and narrow. Nathan Ford, the part I play, who's the uh, former insurance investigator, uh, who has now gone to the other side and become somewhat of a thief con artist himself in order to help uh, those who uh, can't be helped in other ways. One day he was called to lead a group of thieves on a mission. And suddenly he thought, he can take these bad people and use them for good. Yeah, he's always got something in his head. He's always got something, uh, you know, cooking in case something goes wrong. And things go wrong quite often. There is Parker, who has no other name than Parker, who is probably the world's best thief. Parker is a really interesting woman. She um, had a pretty tough upbringing, pretty tough life. Unfortunately, she's also a bit crazy. And she has a very mild case of Asperger's and really doesn't understand how other people react to things in the world. Through it all, she sort of found um, the best way that she knew how to survive, you know, came, came easier w when she was stealing and um, able to get herself in and out of situations easily and quickly. She's the girl you want to hug desperately, but you're a little frightened she might put a knife in your back while you're doing it. And then there, there's Elliot, played by Christian Kane, and he's, in essence, the muscle of the group. I play Elliot Spencer, and it's a little, it's a little bit of a mystery to where, uh, what his background is. It's definitely military. He's been a retrieval specialist, so he's been sent all around the world to bring back dangerous items and risk his neck doing so. What I did was I just made him mad at the world, <laughs> so he's always upset until he gets in a fight, and it's just, you know, then that's when he's actually calm. So he's always, you know, he's got the wisecracks. He really can't stand the people that he's around sometimes, and it, you know, everything kind of bugs him. In a strange way, he's, all, he's the most grounded of the group because he's been very clear on what he's done his whole life. But he's also been a loner, as has everybody on this team. Nate Ford, played by Timothy Hutton, if he's the, if he's the gun, if he's the trigger, then I'm the bullet. And that brings us to Alec Hardison, who is our resident hacker, computer genius, and sci-fi nerd. But not in the 1980s pocket protector way with the, with the, the band-aids and the glasses. He's the image of the modern-day geek, which means he's going to rule the world soon. 
Alec Hardison is the tech specialist. He knows everything about computers. He's a big super geek, but he's still a cool dude. But uh, this is something he's been doing all his life, just you know, cracking into places, just to see if he can get in. It's you know, it's what he does for fun, and uh, now he's turned it into a life life career of um, you know, he's just a career criminal. He's played uh, uh, with such style uh, that I think it's going to redefine the way you think of the computer hacker in the future. It's all about the hands. See, the, the face tricks you. I'll pull you in with the face. Only a mother could love this face. Hi, how you doing? But the hands are doing the work. Then there's Sophie Devereaux, played by Gina Bellman. And she is a grifter in the grand tradition of the grifter. Well, Sophie Devereaux is an enigma, and I was informed by um, one of our writers the other day that we don't even know if that's her name, and it might be revealed in a later episode that that's not even her name. She can be a thousand different people with a thousand different voices. And even to this team, who's become very close to her, they're never really quite sure who she really is or where she really came from. She's a great mouthpiece. She can put on any um, characterization, which obviously is a gift for an actor. Um, she can play a nun, she can play a banker, she can play a pilot. Gina is amazing with her dialects, you know, I mean, they, they throw so many at her and she just tackles them like nobody's business. But her secret ambition is to be a theatrical actress. And what's, what's really um, kooky about her is that she bombs on stage. I mean, she's just awful. She falls flat on her face. What Nate, Tim's character, realizes about Sophie is that she can give a perfect performance if she's breaking the law. I think the ongoing conflict of the show is, can this group stay together? You never know if they're gonna stick together as a group from show to show, week to week. So, so that's kind of uh, great to, uh, to come back and see, uh, see how they're all getting along and, and how they're each contributing to uh, the plan. Make no mistake about it, these people have big hearts, you know, but they also, they're thieves. It's about the money, it's about what, what, what can we get for ourselves. And we found, you know, along the way, helping people feels pretty good too. I, I think people are gonna really take notice of what's, what we did on this one, and, and we're very proud of it. We hope that for an hour, we get to transport you into some place that's a little more fun, it's a little bit more adventurous. Action! And just let you escape what's going on in the world and vanish off into the fantasy world of leverage. <laughs>